discriminated against all my life because of my golden child sister. I got revenge. Growing up, I always felt like I was living in someone else's shadow, my sister's shadow, to be exact. Her name was Emily, and she was the golden child in our family. Ever since I could remember, everything she did was perfect in my parents' eyes. If I brought home an A from school, Emily had already aced her exams. If I cleaned my room, Emily had already done her chores and was praised for her spotless organization. It was exhausting, always being compared to someone who seemed untouchable. We were only two years apart, but it felt like there was a vast chasm between us. Emily had this natural charm about her that made everyone gravitate towards her. She was the kind of person who could walk into a room and immediately command attention. Blonde hair, blue eyes, a bright smile. She fit the mold of the all-American girl, the kind you'd see in magazines. I, on the other hand, was, well, different. Dark-haired, introverted, and awkward in social situations. I was the contrast that no one could ignore. And trust me, they didn't. It wasn't just her looks that made Emily the favorite. It was her accomplishments, her effortless way of excelling at everything she did. From a young age, she was a straight-A student, captain of the soccer team, and an accomplished pianist. By the time she was 16, she had a portfolio of achievements that could put any adult to shame. And me? I struggled to find my place. I was good at art, but in a family that valued academics and sports above all, that didn't mean much. Every time I tried to share my artwork, it felt like no one really cared, as if my efforts were less worthy of attention because I wasn't Emily. My parents, particularly my mother, made it painfully obvious where their preferences lay. Why can't you be more like Emily? was a phrase I had grown used to hearing. It didn't matter what I did. I could never live up to their golden child. At family dinners, conversations revolved around Emily's latest achievements, while my own life seemed to be of little interest. Over time, I started to withdraw, staying silent, keeping my thoughts and feelings to myself. It hurt less that way. What stung the most was that Emily wasn't a bad person. In fact, she was painfully nice. She didn't rub her success in my face or act superior. Sometimes, she would even try to include me in her circle of friends, but every time she did, it only made me feel more insignificant. When your sister is a golden child, even her kindness feels like a reminder of your own inadequacy. As we got older, the gap between us widened. Emily went off to a prestigious college on a full-ride scholarship, while I attended a local community college. She moved into a bright future filled with endless opportunities, while I felt trapped in a cycle of mediocrity. Our parents proudly displayed Emily's college acceptance letter on the refrigerator, next to a picture of her in her soccer uniform. My acceptance letter? It was somewhere in a drawer, collecting dust. But the worst part of it all was the way my parents' favoritism shaped my own self-worth. I began to believe I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worthy of the same love and attention. I started resenting Emily, not because of who she was, but because of the pedestal she had been placed on. Every interaction with her became a reminder of what I could never be. Despite all this, I played the role of the dutiful daughter, silently enduring the constant comparisons and the feeling of being invisible in my own family. But deep down, resentment festered. I knew one thing for sure. I couldn't spend the rest of my life being second best. One day, I promised myself things would change. Little did I know, the events that would lead to my revenge were already being set in motion. And when the time came, I wouldn't just step out of Emily's shadow. I would destroy the perfect image my parents had built around her. But that's getting ahead of myself. For now, I was just the forgotten daughter, quietly biding my time. Life went on, and with each passing year, I became more and more invisible. Emily, on the other hand, continued to bask in the golden light of our parents' approval. She thrived at college, made the dean's list, joined prestigious clubs, and was even voted class president. Every holiday when she came home, it was the same story. Family dinners filled with praise for Emily, updates on her latest accomplishments, and endless admiration for her charm, grace, and talent. I, of course, was an afterthought. 
my modest achievements, a part-time job at a local bookstore, a small art exhibit at a nearby gallery, barely registered on their radar. It was exhausting to pretend that it didn't bother me, but years of being in the background had taught me to wear a mask. I smiled, nodded, and congratulated Emily when necessary. But inside, I felt the weight of my growing resentment like a dark cloud hanging over me. But cracks in perfection always find a way to surface. And Emily's golden image, as flawless as it seemed, wasn't as untouchable as everyone thought. It all started one summer when Emily came home for break. She had just finished her junior year, and my parents were already talking about how she was applying to law schools, sure that she'd be accepted into the top programs in the country. As usual, I was in the background, sitting quietly at the dinner table while my parents talked excitedly about Emily's bright future. But something was different this time. Emily seemed off. She wasn't her usual bubbly self, and I noticed her avoiding direct eye contact. My parents, of course, were oblivious, too busy congratulating her on yet another successful year at college. But I could sense something was wrong. Her smile didn't reach her eyes, and her laughter seemed forced. For once, I was curious about what was going on behind the scenes of her perfect life. Later that night, while my parents were in the living room, I overheard Emily on the phone in her bedroom. I hadn't meant to eavesdrop, but her voice was loud and the door was slightly ajar. She was talking to someone, a guy, it seemed, and her tone was far from the confident Emily I was used to hearing. No, I told you I can't do that. She hissed, her voice trembling with frustration. I can't just drop everything and run away with you. Do you know what that would do to my family? They'd never forgive me. I stood frozen in the hallway, not daring to move. What was she talking about? Emily, the one who always did everything right was hiding something. And whatever it was, it was big. As the conversation continued, I began to piece together fragments of the story. Apparently, Emily had been seeing someone, a guy my parents didn't know about. Not just dating him, either. It sounded serious. She was talking about how she couldn't leave her perfect life behind, how she was trapped by her parents' expectations, and how much pressure she felt to maintain the image they had of her. There was even mention of an unwanted pregnancy scare, a secret she had kept hidden. This was the Emily I never knew, the Emily behind the mask. For a moment, I felt a strange pang of sympathy. Even though I had always resented her for being the favorite, hearing her confess how suffocated she felt made me realize that the pedestal she had been placed on came with its own set of chains. But that sympathy was short-lived. Because while she might have been feeling trapped by perfection, she was still the golden child. She still had the love and admiration of our parents, while I remained forgotten. That's when I realized, this was my opportunity. I wasn't going to expose Emily's secrets just yet, but knowing what I knew gave me a sense of power I had never felt before. For the first time in my life, I had something over her, something she would be terrified of my parents finding out and that meant I had leverage. The next few weeks were tense. Emily was on edge, constantly checking her phone and acting distant. I watched her closely, pretending not to notice the cracks in her perfect facade. But deep down, I was planning my next move. I knew that the perfect time to strike would come soon. It was only a matter of waiting for the right moment. And when that moment came, I would make sure it wasn't just Emily's image that crumbled. My parents, too would finally see her for what she truly was flawed, just like the rest of us. And maybe then, in the weeks that me, followed, I became a quiet observer in my own house, carefully watching as Emily's carefully constructed world began to show more signs of strain. While my parents remained blissfully unaware of the tension bubbling beneath the surface, I was like a hawk, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. My patience would pay off, and when it did, I'd make sure everyone saw the truth. Emily wasn't as perfect as they believed. No one was. And once the truth came out, I'd be standing there, no longer in her shadow, but as the one who exposed the lies. The idea was intoxicating, and for the first time in my life, I felt in control. I felt powerful. I started gathering more information. It wasn't difficult. Emily was more distracted than ever, making careless mistakes. 
She left her phone lying around, sometimes unlocked, and I couldn't resist peeking into her messages. The guy she had been talking to on the phone, the one she was hiding from my parents, his name was Jake. From what I could gather, Jake was a rebellious type, the kind of guy my parents would never approve of, tattoos, motorcycles, the works. He wasn't the clean-cut, ambitious law student my parents had envisioned for their golden child. No, he was the exact opposite. It was delicious irony. The girl who had spent her entire life being perfect was secretly living a double life. I found out that Emily had been skipping classes to spend weekends with Jake, lying to my parents about school projects or club activities. She had told them she was preparing for law school, but in reality, she was barely passing her courses. The pressure of living up to their expectations was getting to her, and I could see that she was starting to crack under it. But the juiciest piece of information I discovered was about the pregnancy scare. Emily had come dangerously close to revealing the truth to Jake. Her texts were full of panicked messages about being late, not knowing what to do, and fearing what would happen if my parents ever found out. But then, just as quickly as the storm had appeared, it passed. She wasn't pregnant after all, and for a while, it seemed like Emily was back in control. Except, she wasn't. Not really. And I knew it. Armed with this knowledge, I began to subtly plant seeds of doubt. I didn't want to blow things up right away. That would have been too obvious. Instead, I wanted to savor the moment when everything finally fell apart, and I could stand there, the calm in the storm, as my parents' perfect world crumbled around them. The first step was planting doubt in my parents' minds, but gently. I began making small comments, innocent enough on the surface, but designed to make them question Emily's perfection. I'm surprised Emily isn't stressed about law school applications yet. I'd say during dinner, in a casual tone. I heard those deadlines are coming up soon, or I'd mention something about how she seemed more tired than usual, or how she wasn't spending as much time studying as she used to. My parents, predictably, brushed it off at first. Emily's just taking a well-deserved break, they'd say. Or, she's got everything under control. She always does, but I could see it in their eyes. The tiniest flicker of doubt had been planted. Then came step two. I knew I had to create a situation where Emily couldn't hide her double life any longer. I didn't need to manufacture a scandal. The pieces were already there. All I needed to do was nudge things in the right direction. And that's when I had the perfect idea. I would bring Jake into the picture. It was easier than I expected. I had memorized Jake's phone number from Emily's messages. And one afternoon when she was out with friends, I sent him a text from her phone. I made sure to sound casual, like it was something Emily might say. Hey, why don't you come by the house this weekend? My parents are out of town and I miss you. Let's hang out. I wasn't sure if he'd go for it but he did. He replied almost immediately, saying he'd be there. My heart pounded as I realized what I had just set in motion. If Jake showed up at our house, tattoos, motorcycle, and all, my parents would finally see the truth. There'd be no more hiding, no more lies. The golden child's perfect image would be shattered. That weekend, I made sure to stick around. My parents weren't actually going out of town, of course. They were planning a quiet evening at home. Emily had no idea what was coming. I watched as she lounged on the couch, completely unaware of the storm I had set in motion. Then, right on cue, the roar of a motorcycle pulled into the driveway. I saw Emily's face turn pale as she jumped up from the couch, running to the window. I could see the panic in her eyes as she recognized Jake's bike. My parents, curious about the noise, got up from the kitchen table to see what was going on. What's that racket? My dad muttered, walking to the front door. My mom followed, and I stood behind them, barely able to contain my excitement. The door opened just as Jake stepped off his bike, helmet in hand, walking towards the house. My dad froze, and my mom gasped. Emily, who had rushed to the door, tried to explain, but the damage was done. Who is this? My dad asked, his voice low and dangerous. Emily stammered unable to find the words. I stood there, silently watching as the perfect mask she had worn for so long finally began to crack. I had waited years for this moment, and now, it was here. The golden child had fallen. The moment felt surreal. 
As Jake stood awkwardly on our front porch, my dad's expression shifting from confusion to anger, I relished the quiet chaos unfolding. This was it, the moment I had meticulously planned. Emily, the golden child, was about to be exposed for who she really was, and for once, I wouldn't be the one sitting in her shadow. I could already taste the victory. But just as my dad opened his mouth to demand answers, something unexpected happened. Emily, pale and trembling, didn't collapse into the blubbering mess I expected her to be. Instead, she straightened up, took a deep breath, and said something that made the ground beneath my feet feel like it had been yanked out from under me. This is Jake, she said, voice steadier than I'd heard it in weeks. And we've been seeing each other for over a year. There's something else you need to know. I'm pregnant. A pregnant pause. No pun intended. Hung in the air. My father's face went from red with anger to white with shock. My mother gasped, her hand flying to her mouth in disbelief. And Jake, to my utter amazement, stepped forward, standing beside Emily and taking her hand, as if this was all some part of their plan. The silence was deafening. It wasn't just the revelation itself that left me speechless. It was the way Emily had completely taken control of the situation. There she stood, in front of our stunned parents, owning the truth like it was her victory to claim. This wasn't the Emily I had expected to crumble. No, this was a different Emily altogether, one I hadn't anticipated. I wasn't going to tell you like this, she continued, her voice soft but unwavering, but I can't keep pretending. I love Jake, and I'm keeping the baby. This was not how things were supposed to go. She was supposed to be humiliated, not standing tall with Jake at her side, turning this entire situation into some twisted moment of strength. I had spent months planning this, waiting for her downfall. And instead, she had turned her greatest secret into a weapon, something that made her look brave. I felt the bile rise in my throat as I realized the tables had turned. My father, still processing the bombshell, finally managed to speak, though his voice wavered. Pregnant? Emily, how could you do this? After everything we've sacrificed for you, your future, your law school plans, how could you throw all that away? I'm not throwing anything away. Emily shot back, her blue eyes flashing with determination. I'm making a choice. My choice. I've been living up to your expectations my whole life, and it's suffocating me. I'm done trying to be perfect for you. This is my life, and I'm going to live it on my terms. My mother collapsed into a chair, sobbing quietly. My dad looked like he had been punched in the gut, his stern exterior crumbling. And me? I stood there, numb, my mind racing to catch up with the reality that was crashing down around me. This was supposed to be my victory. I had wanted to see Emily suffer, to see my parents' golden image of her shattered. And yes, her confession had done that, but not in the way I had expected. Instead of falling apart, Emily had taken the reins of the narrative and somehow, somehow, turned it to her advantage. For years, I had imagined this moment where everything would flip, where I would be the one in the spotlight, and Emily would be the one overshadowed. But now... Watching her stand defiantly in front of my parents, I realized that I had completely underestimated her. She wasn't crumbling. She was fighting back. And in that moment, I felt something else, something I hadn't anticipated, fear. What if I had pushed too far? What if, instead of bringing Emily down, I had given her the strength to break free from the very chains that had made her so perfect in the first place? What if by trying to destroy her, I had actually set her free. Suddenly, my parents' disapproval wasn't the focus anymore. Instead, it was Emily's bold declaration, her audacity to stand there and declare that she was choosing a different path. She wasn't the obedient, perfect daughter anymore. She was something else now, something stronger. But then, just as I thought the situation couldn't get any worse, Jake spoke up, and what he said next took everything I thought I knew and turned it upside down. We wanted to tell you earlier, Jake said, his voice calm, steady. But there's more. This wasn't just a random decision. We're getting married. In fact, we already got engaged two months ago. Emily and I were in love. Engaged? 
I felt the blood drain from my face. This wasn't supposed to be happening. This wasn't the disaster I had planned. This was something entirely different. My parents looked absolutely shattered. But Emily? She looked free. And me? I felt like I had lost everything before I even had the chance to win. Emily's grip on Jake's hand tightened as she looked directly at my parents, her voice softening. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I know this isn't what you wanted from me, but it's what I want. I hope you'll understand eventually. The room was dead silent, except for my mother's quiet sobs. My father looked like a man who had just lost his way, his eyes distant, unseeing. And I stood there, feeling the walls close and around me. For years, I had been the forgotten one, the one in the background, always living in Emily's shadow. And now, even after everything I had done, I wasn't the one standing in the light. No, Emily had stepped out of her own shadow and into something even more powerful, her truth. And I, I was still standing in the dark. The days that followed Emily's revelation were a blur. The house, usually filled with the warm chatter of family life, had become eerily silent. My parents barely spoke to Emily, their disappointment hanging like a thick fog in the air. Jake came by a few more times, offering quiet support to her, but the energy in our home was tense, suffocating. I expected some grand fallout, something explosive, but instead, everything felt muted, numb. It was as though the life had drained out of all of us. I thought I'd feel victorious satisfied by Emily's downfall, but instead, I felt hollow. Emily, for her part, remained calm. She moved through the house with quiet determination, spending most of her time with Jake or preparing for what was coming next, her wedding, her new life. I watched from the sidelines, realizing that instead of the disaster I had planned, she had created a new version of herself, one I couldn't tear down. She didn't need to be perfect anymore. She just needed to be herself, and somehow, that had made her more powerful than ever. The strangest part? Our parents didn't completely disown her. Yes, they were devastated at first, but after some time, they softened. As weeks passed, they began talking to Emily again, cautiously, with quiet hope that maybe, just maybe, they could come to terms with the life she had chosen. They didn't approve of Jake, not entirely but they didn't cut her off either. Emily had won, not by meeting their expectations, but by forcing them to accept her as she was. And me? I was left behind in the quiet wake of her victory. For weeks, I tried to make sense of it all. I had spent so many years of my life resenting Emily, convinced that her perfection was the cause of my misery. But now, seeing her break free from the very pedestal I had been so eager to topple, I realized something else. Maybe it wasn't Emily I had hated all along. Maybe it was the expectations, the constant comparisons, the feeling of always being second best. And maybe, just maybe, I had been so consumed by jealousy that I hadn't seen the truth. I had my own path, my own life, separate from hers. I had always assumed that in order to feel whole, I had to bring her down. But watching Emily take control of her life, I saw something I had never considered. I didn't need to stand in her shadow anymore. I could step out on my own, in my own way. The realization didn't come all at once, but slowly, like a fog lifting. I started spending more time on my art, pouring my confusion and anger into something creative, something that was entirely mine. I realized that I had wasted so much energy trying to prove something to my parents, when in reality, the only person I needed to prove anything to was myself. A few months later, Emily and Jake had a small wedding. It wasn't the grand, elegant affair my parents had once envisioned for their golden child, but it was intimate, genuine, and, most importantly, happy. I attended, sitting quietly in the back, watching as my parents, though still hesitant, smiled through their tears. I didn't feel the resentment I thought I would. Instead, I felt something close to relief. The race was over. The comparison, the competition, it didn't matter anymore. Emily's life was her own now, and so was mine. In the years that followed, Emily and I slowly rebuilt a relationship. Not as rivals, 
but as sisters. It wasn't easy, and there were times when the old feelings of resentment would creep back in, but things were different now. We had both changed. Emily wasn't the perfect golden child anymore, and I wasn't the forgotten one. I began showing my artwork in more galleries, eventually making a name for myself in the local art scene. My parents, while not as openly proud of my path as they had been of Emily's, began to respect what I was doing. They came to one of my gallery openings, awkwardly at first, but eventually with genuine curiosity and interest. In the end, the revenge I had so desperately sought had become unnecessary. I had wanted to bring Emily down, but what I had really needed all along was to find my own strength. And I did. In the quiet of my studio, surrounded by paint and canvases, I found something far more valuable than revenge. I found myself. The golden child may have fallen from her pedestal, but in the end, it didn't matter. We both rose, in our own ways, and that was the real victory.